Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to episode 10 and a half of project LS400. Why 10 and a half? Well, I have started out working, but some things came in between. I lost the footage and I didn't get much done uh, in between. I uh, had a lot of things going on and a lot of things on my mind. I had to take care of, had to work a bit, take care of my family. But now it's time to do a little more work on the car. Um, not sure if I recorded that already, but I got the um, spark plug gaskets in, finally. Tried to install it, I test fitted this one, but I wasn't sure how they went in. I had to look it up and how deep I had to smack them in, because there is a metal plate on the inside. Um, you have to install the... This gas is it's best to install them with the uh, valve covers off. But I couldn't do that and I had to uh, cover up the valve train while I was working on the intake and all. Um, so that'll be done in this episode. Hopefully, hopefully. And I want to take out the... There it is. The power steering pump over there. I saw it was leaking. Um, as you can see, I already took off the uh, reservoir for the power steering, I drained it. And now it's time for me to take it off. The uh, only problem I had when I tried to take it off is to loosen um, this nut over here that holds the pressure line. Um, so I quit working in episode 10 and now we'll continue in 10 and a half with the... Um, disassembly of the power steering pump so i'll have you have the camera set up on a tripod and try to get th that thing out so i took the power steering reservoir off a few lines there and i saw there was a tab a locking tab on the pressure line from the pump but i still can't get any movement in this banjo bolt that holds the pressure line on so I hope it gave me a bit more space, but it doesn't. But at least now I can reach the bolts back here and in front here. So I hope you I can get the pump off. But I think I'll have a quick run home and get a ring wrench to put on this on this banjo bolt, and hopefully it'll give and I can take it off. Um, I've been struggling with it a few hours, I think one and a half hours the last time, so I gave up and I thought give it a, give it a rest, read the workshop manual, see if there are any further instructions, there are detailed instructions on everything, but on the power steering pump it says uh, loosen the bolts, remove the pump, no order and no tightening torques and all, and installation is in reverse order of removal, so that's easy. And for all other things like these stupid screws, for instance, or for example, they have a detailed instruction on how to locate the rotor inside and all. But the power ceiling from there are, well, it's lacking the instructions. But um, no worries yet. I think you'll uh, will have it off. But I wanted to do it, do it in a decent way without putting too much parts or without uh, breaking lose a wrench and smacking a hole in my air conditioning radiator. So I'll have a quick run home and then uh, give it a new attempt. So the problem I'm having here is with this banjo bolt as I said. I try to get it loose with my, my 17 mil wrench but uh, it won't budge, it won't turn. So now I got this wrench and I hope Give me a bit more momentum. There's this bend in it so that the hopefully the wrench will be a bit more upright. And if needed, I can put a, a pipe over it to have some more give. Um, I was doubting it might have, have a reverse thread, but I can't think of a reason why it would have. So I'll set you up on a tripod again and let's give this a try. Just hope it has better grip on the hex 
head. At least that lens itself is a bit longer. It's very hard to get it on straight. Nope, nothing. Nothing at all. I'm not doing in the other direction too, so give this a try. Bust my knuckles. I'm unlucky. Nope. It won't budge a bit. The problem is I can't get my ratchet and the socket on there because it's this much room and I need this much room. That is beyond me why this would be so incredibly tight. I'm pretty sure I knocked out a locking tab. At least if that was a locking tab. But in good news, it wasn't actually a locking tab. It's the uh, so the camera will focus the uh, rings, and they were connected with a with a lip in here. So that one's out. Now we'll get the bolts of the steering pump itself out because it's very cramped in here. I cannot use my regular. Uh, half inch uh, socket, I believe it's half inch, I'm not, anyway, so I have to use a small one, but I can't apply enough force, so I found this pipe and use it as an extension, and hopefully it will give me enough momentum and torque to break loose these bolts. But again, it's very cramped and all these lines are in the way. And the problem with these lines is they roll and they crack easily. Okay. That won't work. Okay. Let's rethink that. A moment, please. We have success, folks. I tried to access the bolt from the top, but I put on my regular ratchet from down below and I cracked all the bolts loose. So now this thing should come off fairly easy. Good thing I have small hands. And while I'm doing that, I see this coolant line that's connected to the throttle body housing. There's a line still missing. Not forget, don't need, don't forget to put that in. Otherwise, we'll have use coolant leak first at first start. That would be dumb. Over one is coming out. Let's see, equal length. No, can't mix them up. Okay, and there it is. Have to get my extension. Once it's loose, once it's cracked loose, things come off quite easily. You see the quality of these bolts. Hope it shows. Let me in front of the camera. These are really high quality bolts. Focus, buddy. Doesn't want to focus now, doesn't want to. Anyway, these are quality bolts, so even 
winter, 29 years stuck in here, gone through many weather cycles, heat cycles. Um, once they're loose, they come up easily without a problem. So and there's the last one, it's a shorter one, remember that. And there you have it, the power steering pump. So guys, welcome in my tiny workshop in our backyard. I had to do some cleaning up and while I did it, I smacked my head into this pulley here that's been hanging here for a couple of weeks. I took it off a long time ago, somewhere in the previous episode, and I cleaned it, I painted it so it looked nicely. But that's the problem you have with these old cars and the size of these projects when you do work on and off. You tend to forget things and I realized that yesterday when I noticed there was a coolant line missing and I had to do the testing the, uh, on the power of the fuel system, it's not leaking, all these tiny things. Um, when you do this kind of project you always run into things that you had to stop because of shortage of time or so or you have to wait for parts and all so you do something else but there's always these tiny things you forget and that can screw up a project on a later moment for instance such a coolant line it would be uh, quite messy if it started leaking uh, hopefully at the first start and you find it can consider yourself lucky but on the other hand you don't want that when you're somewhere along the road ha halfway the country and there's no one to help you here uh, there are no parts available for this Lexus LS 400s over here so you had to get the towing service and all. So I try to focus more on projects, uh, these partial part side projects and partial products, and do one at a time. So let's focus now on the power steering pump. Here it is on my bench. I'm gonna take it apart and see what's leaking, what the conditions of the bearings and the gaskets inside there are. And hopefully it doesn't leak too much. Um, I don't have my tripods at hand here, so I'll film uh, the next clip once I have this apart. So, here we go. So that's step one out of the way. The bolts and the rear are out. <laughs> but it took me five minutes with my hair gun and my poor old hair compressor and overload to get them out. They're out. Now let's split this. And one hour later. I have the power steering pump apart. I'm um, going to clean up the mess and show you what I found. And I found a reason why it was so hard to take apart. One moment. Well, it's already dark out. I'm still in my shed. I had to run some errands. But this is the exploded view from the workshop manual. And this is the exploded view on my bench. Uh, everything is apart. The entire pump. Um, Someone has been in here before. There are telltale signs. Um, one thing I don't like in specific is the decoloration, the lacquer on the back plate and on the pump axle. And this is how the power steering fluid looks like. You see a little bit of reflection, but it should be bright red. And it's fairly dark brownish, so and it and it smells, it's burned. So um, that means I have to uh, flush the system, um, the power steering system, anyway. Um, back to the back plate. Put it more in light. You can see there's this uh, silicone gasket. Probably this O-ring has been leaking for a while, and they took it apart and what they did is well, you can see there is this gasket maker all over and it was still sweating so I hope I can find a new o-ring same size that'll solve my problem I'm going to replace the bearing it isn't too bad um, it's a, a double-sided sealed bearing there's a little bit of play so while I have this apart, it's a good idea to replace it. It's uh, what type of bearing is it? Not sure it shows on the camera. Have to look for myself. It's a, a 6303 RDD. It says. I'll blink it in here, 
and this is the o-ring that came out I'm going to replace that too because i smacked it to smithereens and it was leaking you could see it leaked on this side of the bedding and so that's why it was sweating on the outside uh, furthermore this is the inner housing from the power steering pump itself it's okay no wear marks or anything all the veins are in they look good i have to clean it now because i dropped it on the on the rubber top of my bench and it was a bit sand of it so i have to give it a thorough clean and this is the regulator let's see how it's called in the uh the uh, um it's connected to some airlines and, and there's a plunger in here i'm not sure what it does i'll Figure it out. Yeah, it, it, it responds to the, the engine speed, so it can adjust the amount of um, assist the power steering plump, pump delivers to the steering rack. Uh, I believe something like that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, call it quits for today. And next thing I'll do is clean the housing, order a new bearing, a new seal and hope I can find a new o-ring for this. So everything is nice and clean. There was a lot of varnish or lacquer buildup on the back plate here. And I used my wire wheel to get it off. And it actually went quite fast without too much effort. Also, I don't want to scrape it. I don't know if it shows on camera, but there are some circles on your fine, fine grooves from factory and they are all still in so you don't want to put, have too much force i only have this uh, soft steel wire wheel but it can easily uh, make scratches in the aluminum of the housing and the back plate but didn't do that um, the pump axle is hard and steel there was also a lot of varnish build up but i got that off there are no markings you can see this is slightly more polished over here. That's where the uh, pump uh, runs. And also, this is where the bearing rests. The bearing itself was easy to tap off. I used a vise, uh, let it rest on the bearing, and then use a small drift in this hole. You don't want to smack your hammer on this edge, otherwise, you can mushroom it out and you can never get those splines back in the pump like that uh, that got cleaned up real nice tapped the bearing off when the bearing was still on the pump axle you can hear you could feel a small click so i decided to order a new one and this is a 6303 rdd bearing made by koyo it says you can read it yeah you can read it um i couldn't find exactly the same but you need first of all you need to find the bearing with the same number so 6303 you get the same dimensions it's 47 mil outer diameter 40 millimeter thickness and the inside diameter is 70 millimeters there's the same for all 6303 bearings but the denomination after the number in this case rdd says there is important um, there are two denominations or letters behind the number of the bearing it can be either zz or uh, rs2 or 2rs and that means uh, zz means there are metal plates on the bearing over the bearing balls over the grooves to seal it off to prevent ingress of dust and this uh, 2rs or RDD means that it's sealed with a flexible seal on both sides and there's grease in there That's lubrication for the lifetime of the bearing and this is still pretty good But since 
have everything apart and I can feel a, a slight click I decided to uh, replace it anyway it was fairly expensive you can get a decent 2RS bearing in this size for say 8 euros I ordered a 20 euro one um, had better specifications so while we're at it gave it that a go uh, the seal the oil seal um, this one was leaking in fact it was damaged and it was really damaged after I ticked it out and it was it was cracked. The thing with this seal is it has a uh, metal casing on the outside and it was fairly hard to find online. I eventually managed to find one with exact same dimensions and specifications. Um, you have a lot of seals available. And one, uh, you've got seals uh, that are fuel and oil resistant but they then they aren't heat or water or steam resistant so I had, had to do some cross-referencing and eventually found a suitable one and I ordered a bunch of these so if I managed to destroy one of them um, remember the spark plug gaskets I have uh, several re replacements then the hardest thing to find were these o-rings they go around these back plates of the housing these two and they actually seal off the pumping part of the power steering pump, the actual uh, fans with these blades or the rotor with the fans in there. And they go in, can you see it? This groove here. Um, but one of them must have been leaking because you can still see some residue of the liquid gasket maker or the silicone gasket. And every time I mention that, I mean this stuff, this, yeah, it's a silicone kind of gasket that was put in there. So someone has been in here before to solve the problem of a leaking power steering pump, which is a common issue on these engines, on the 1UZ and the LS400. And it uh, seeps through here, drips down on the alternator, and then uh, the power steering fluid well, it, it, it works its way into the alternator, uh, causing the alternator uh, to fail at one point. Happened with mine, got a new alternator, and the power steering pump didn't look too bad, but you can tell, there are telltale signs, there's this silicon gasket that was on the back plate and here in the housing, and it's stuff you don't want to have interfering with your pump. Um, so, I took measurements, found an uh, they, they, they are measured by the inside diameter which is just over 55 millimeters and there's then the thickness of the string as it's called um, it's almost two millimeters so I ordered uh, two o-rings or at least a bag of o-rings believe there are five in there that have um, the same inner diameter and have a string thickness of two millimeters so and then they should protrude a little more from this back plate and these are now then you can see these are really squished here become flat so I can imagine when the pump builds a pressure it can leak through there when it's leaking inside the pump it's not that bad you have some pumping loss some efficiency loss but it, when it starts leaking around this back seal it will eventually leak out of the um, pump itself so, uh, and when I have those parts in, we'll continue uh, to reassemble the pump. Only one thing I need to do is to pick out this lacquer buildup inside here where the oil seal uh, sits and here is where the bearing rests. So, that's all I need to do now. So, I measured all the fans and the clearance in the housing and they are all well well within spec and I think the tolerances in the workshop very well uh, are so say roomy uh, so large uh, that would it, it would take uh, at least two million kilometers of driving before these are out of spec so um, I think I'm ready to start to reassemble uh, the whole th thing and that starts with a new uh, seal that goes in there and then the new bearing on the pump shaft, which is a, not a too tight fit. I sh should be able to slide it in. So what I'm going to do is uh, install the seal in here, put a new uh, bearing on the pump shaft, and 
then catch you up from there. Here are the new and the old bearing. The dimensions are exactly the same. As you might expect when you order a bearing with the same number. It's sealed on both sides with a plastic or flexible uh, seal. Makes it, uh, say, completely sealed off and that's lubricated for its lifetime with grease. So, let's put this on a vet. I'll do that in my vise and pick you up from there, wind buddy. So, what I did is put a bearing on there and made sure that the inner race rests on the jaws of the vise and then put a nut on backwards and then gently tap it in with a hammer. Usually you don't want to uh, uh, put a load on the outer race while you're trying to install the shaft on the inner one, but in this case I had it rest on oh, had it rest on the inner race so it shouldn't have done any damage at all. And with the help of my 32 mil socket, a small drift and a fairly large hammer I tapped the bearing in and it seats in nice, it went in straight and got for that. So next thing to do is to install the circlip that holds it in place and then it's off to the back side install the rotor. Let's see if I can do this with one hand and still film it. There it is, bearing and circlip is in. Now we're coming to a crucial step and crucial in the sense is that I gamble that these uh, O-rings I ordered will be uh, suitable for this housing. Um, I took the measurements of these and they were uh, they are worn, but um, I hope they fit on and then fit it in. Otherwise, I still have a problem. I think this of the front. I believe this is the front, or is this the one the front? Uh, this one's the front one. It goes in first in the in the power steering pump. This one wasn't leaking too bad, but the rear one and on the back plate both were so. But the first order of business is to install these alignment pins and the larger one goes in first. And it goes inside the housing, this, sorry, this being the top of the housing, it goes in there. Wow, I can film, I can film and put it in. Um, pick you up when I have this in and the o-ring installed and then see if things still fit and that is where I lucked out for this episode because the o-rings are too tall I need them to be more tight um, not sure what I'm going to do now um, I could cut them or see if I can find a smaller o-rings with a uh, smaller diameter. Uh, let me think about this for a second. So I got the inner wall from the uh, pump housing in and the worship manual says it should be uh, pressed in using a hydraulic press, press which I don't have. So I tapped it in and it went in very well then it stopped then I use this socket as a sort of a drift. I have to be very careful not to damage these walls because they are a functioning, functional part of the pump. And I looked at the splines on the shaft and I thought they should protrude out more. Then I looked into, hold me hold a second, get me a pointing device. I looked inside here, you can see the light edge. And my gut feeling says it should be pushed in a few millimeters more, but I'm not able to do that. So what I'm going to try is to install the uh, install this housing part of the pump. It's hard to film and do this at the same time, but the idea is to install this. Uh, the other half of the pump that goes in there and then slide the back plate on and then see if it fits and if it doesn't fit I can try to screw in the four bolts these four bolts that hold the end plate and hopefully can push it back in so everything is entirely in so let's give that a go uno momento guys the front plate the 
outer rotor housing and the back plate of the rotor are in, or the pump, I must say, are in. Now I'm going to put on the back plate of the entire pump housing. It goes like this. Sorry, that was me pushing the wrong button, but you can see there's a there's still a, a fairly small gap, so I really need to tap the front housing, the front sidewall of the pump in more. I'm going to put uh, the balls in and tighten them slowly and see if that helps. The good news is that all the balls went in with the ratchet and just turning it by hand and now it's flat all around so it should be tight and now I'm going to pull the bolt back out and see measure everything is installed correctly and then I can toss in the rotor and the veins I have to clean them up it's becoming a bit messy you have to install this alignment pin so um, gonna pull the back plate off and see what we'll find back plate is back off and look guys it did a trick it was fairly simple so I hope this shows on camera that this part of the, the front plate of the pump housing and this ridge here are now are aligned they are flush and it wasn't it was protruding I think a millimeter and a millimeter and a half out so now I'm going to give this a final clean put some ADF transmission fluid in there because the LS400 utilizes ADF fluid as power steering fluid um, lubricate it a bit and put a rotor back together and then toss it in um, I'll get back to you once I have everything in okay there is one thing you have to keep in mind when you disassemble and reassemble this and that's those markings here these dots mark the rear of the pump and that also ensures the correct order so that the wear patterns and the wear marks um, realign when you reinstall the pump so now i have to toss in the veins put in the back side uh, repeat the same trick with the o-ring cut it and put a little bit of uh, silicone sealant in there and then it's time for the back plate to go on and then the power steering pump is almost finished these are the small veins not veins as in blood vessels but veins as in mills and pumps well I'm not sure what the camera will focus on this but they have a rounded and a flat side and they, in this case for this vein this is the rounded side that goes that points to the outside of the rotor and this more square sharp side sticks into the rotor of the pump so here's the back plate um, I gave the o-ring the same treatment because they were all too large you have to snip off a tiny piece and push it into the groove and then I used this silicone gasket maker to seal it off and I put a tiniest amount in the rear here hoping it'll seal off sufficiently so now it's ready to go back on I almost forgot to put in this spring this pusher spring I'm gonna put a little bit of ATF on here for good measure because I cleaned it so oh, really have to focus on my camera work more um, I use some brake clean to clean this back plate and it starts to oxidize get get this white you can see that here it's white stuff on there I don't want that to happen one don't want it to be dry so a little bit of ADF fluid on the back of the spring and now I can put the back plate on and then that should conclude the rebuild of my power steering pump and to use what's west work one of my favorite channels famous words there you have it folks one rebuild power steering pump for a 1uz fe engine but i need to mention one thing uh, sometimes you lose track of things and you just forget it and when i started working on the power steering pump here in my little shed at home 
I smack my head in this and this is the drive pulley for the power steering pump I pulled off weeks ago and I forgot about it however I did paint it so now it's time to go back on its place on the power steering pump there it is install the nut I said I wanted to show you a side project in this episode, but I'll leave this for now, in this episode. Um, my side project hopefully will be on next week. It's uh, For me it's quite a large project and I'm kind of tense about it. It's with an LS400, but not mine. We'll show you later. Anyhow, um, one thing I need to do is to pour in some ATF inside the uh, where the uh, reservoir is for the power steering pump so i'll have some uh, corrosion resistance some what do you call it some preservation inside the pump it could take a couple of weeks before i run the car um but it also can take a couple of months we'll see anyway folks uh thanks for watching this episode uh, i'm sorry i didn't bring my tripod and you can only see my hands work but for now Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye bye.